So, my name is Mick Neve. I'm with CSIRO in entomology. Um, I've been uh, with entomology for th over 35 years. I've done lots of different things. I uh, wouldn't say I'm an expert at anything, but uh, uh, I've had a very uh, broad, uh, general uh, base of knowledge. So, you know, if you have any sort of questions later, and you'll have to come up and chat and feel free. Uh, so, today, this talk is, is, is a little bit off. Um, off sort of on production and stuff, but it's more to do with uh, insects. That's called uh, beneficial, beneficial insects in agricultural production landscapes. What can they do for me? Um, now, is everybody happy if I stand here, or would you like me to move over to the side? It's all right. Fine. Fine. So, I'm going to have a couple of little pictures there. It's the little things that run the world pest control, pollination. Nutrient cycling and soil structure. We just like to throw that last one in because, of course, um, looking after your soil is pretty important. But we'll be focusing on pest control and pollination uh, mostly today. So uh, the subjects today will be pest control. Um, I'll put in, in a, a little bit of data on some of the results we've got from the study. Uh, looking at pollination, um, just tracking with native bees basically, and, and what um, what sort of um, bees are around. And finally, touching on the Russian wheat aphid, which some of you might have heard of, you might know of, or might be thinking of in terms of what you might have to do in the future to um, control um, this particular pest. So pest control uh, is the first part. Um, we have what's called beneficial um, insects, in particular predators. Um, parasitic wasps are also useful. So not all insects in your world crops are uh, pests and need to be eradicated. Some of them are some good guys and uh, we need to sort of look after those guys. So um, as you know, pest control can cost quite a lot of money uh, for you. Um, you know, outbreaks are, don't happen all the time, but from time to time you can spend quite a substantial amount of money on pest control. Uh, those figures there, $200 per uh, hectare per year for Australia. Uh, I, I don't know where those results come from, but I'm sure you can probably um, decide whether that's a fair assessment for yourself. Um, so our study sites that we did um, for this particular uh, landscape studies uh, was uh, actually a national program. So GRDC funded it and they decided that they wanted to um, make the results so they, they could be applicable across the, um, all the states, all the grain growing states. Um, WA, Queensland and New South Wales. So we just focus on now New South Wales sites that we looked at. Uh, I was involved in that and one of the main drives in, in uh, going out there and doing the day-to-day the, uh, -day work. Uh, so in our sites, uh, we had, um, in New South Wales, we had, we had a low native veg site and a high native veg site. Now, uh, as you can see, the high native veg site was 16%, which you know, may or may not be very high when you look at uh, uh, at the site out here, um, you can, I can see quite a lot of veg and a lot of, um, you know, that's the cypress sort of um, native pines and stuff out here. So you get quite a little bit more than um, uh, even the higher side, I think, here, you know, it depends on how close you are to those patches of veg. Um, the two sites, one was at um, Young in New South Wales, that was the high native veg site. Uh, the low native veg site was at uh, Bathungra, which is a little town near Kudamunga, which you probably know. Surprising how many people uh, know, uh, know people from down the way once you start talking to them. So as you can see in those sites, there's a very high percentage of crop. Um, the lower one, which is the, the Bathungra site, um, in fact has quite, quite a substantial amount of crop. So just looking at the, the sites there from you know above, uh, well that's what it sort of looks like when we use the, the GRS sort of packages. And you can look at this lower one here, which is the fun one, and you see there's, there's actually um, not that much veg in it. And you can see the two roads, uh, <coughs> the two sort of main main roads through here, just dirt roads going through. This is about 20 kilometres wide, and that was our focus of, of our, our study. What we did was we looked at every and we selected uh, just about every pattern like that and knew what was being grown in that per season. So we run this project over a couple of years. We knew exactly what was, we had all the measures going in uh, 
in the name of each uh, site as well. So we, we did we measurements in, in those as well. Uh, so what we're looking at is trying to find out how uh, pest suppressive our landscape is. And um, by pest suppressive, I mean um, the landscape that has the right mix of habitats that support beneficial insects and allows them to move into crop fields while discouraging discourage and build up pest uh, insect species. We know that pest outbreaks are generally uncommon. Uh, so if beneficials are present uh, in a close enough proximity to crop fields, to reduce pest numbers, we've got a bit of a chance. So it's just a matter of um, uh, looking at where, where your uh, crops are and where your native veg is. So the timing of you know, getting beneficial insects is pretty important. Um, as you see here, this is a, an example of a beneficial, which is a lady beetle. Um, they're quite good at um, taking out uh, aphids. If uh, you get your um, beneficial insect arriving late in the, in the, in the season, then you're only going to be impacting on the pests um, to a minor extent. And if you actually get the, uh, the predator in early, then it takes quite a bit of the pest um, pressure off on the crop. So our sampling techniques in this study, we had um, leaf blowers, which you can use as suckers, so we're using those as um, sucking of crops and um, native grasses. We use sweep nets uh, on tote boxes to uh, uh, beat trees as well as crops uh, and weeds. Uh, you can see there, this is uh, some native colitis there as well, and some gum trees. Uh, this is just gives you an idea of what the low, sort of a particular low site looks like. It's just basically a row of uh, trees, so not very dense there, but of course a higher um, uh, amount of veg. Uh, in that patch there and, and has quite a, 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 a variety of species. Um, that, again, some pictures of the, the, the sites that we sort of sampled at. Uh, mainly, uh, quite often it was sort of road sides, um, as both, both the, uh, the top uh, left and the bottom left are. Uh, the top right there is basically just a tree lot, so it's uh, been planted, so some of the stuff's planted. And of course, the bigger patch of pitch that's uh, seen in, in the bottom right there, which is um, basically a state forest or could be just a, a hillock that's not been farmed. So on to some of the results that we, we um, found once we did all this sampling, these uh, uh, crops and native veggies. Um, as you can see uh, in the top uh, high native veg site here, um, <coughs> uh, pests. Uh, there's a lot of pests in weeds uh, in native veg patches. Um, there are very, very few pet pests actually on the native plant species. So, uh, you know, while we have some pests getting into our crops, because we always get them, and, and that is a bit of a problem, um, it's mainly uh, in the weeds and not in the native plant species. So, just again, uh, the weeds in the native. Uh, Vegetation patches are the common pest species, and the native plants host the beneficial insects. So, just in case you're not really sure of what uh, the predators and the beneficial type insects are like, uh, you get brown lace wings, damsel bugs, jumping spiders, uh, and in fact, there are uh, several species of spiders. You've got striped lady beetles. Uh, and in the several species, species of lady beetles as well. And so I just bought, I think I've done has bought these ute guides along that you've probably seen in the farm. We've got uh, this uh, as a southern grain belt one, and we've also got the northern grain belt one, which I, I use quite often. I think it would be quite a handy thing for uh, people like yourselves if you're interested in working out what pest you have, so at least you can go to the designs or whatever, and, and uh, local DPI people with a little bit of knowledge on what you're sort of looking at. Uh, it's always handy to sound like you know what you're talking about. So um, just a quick look at the brown lace wings. That's one of the main um, you know, uh, predators. And um, you can see there that, that across both the uh, adults and the juveniles that 
early in the season, so this is just early in the season, a lot of them hang, tend to hang out in the native veg sites. So this is just a little bit of data that just proves our, our um, theory that, that um, native vegetation houses uh, our beneficials. So uh, now this little um, pie here suggests that there's quite a few mixed grasses as well. So once we've um, obtained all this data, so quite a large data set and uh, uh, put it all together, uh, what we found was, is that, uh, as I, I sort of just mentioned, is that the, there's very few um, pests in the native veg patches compared to uh, what's in the pasture. Uh, a little bit in the crop from time to time. And that was across all three uh, um, types of um, uh, climate, which is temperate Mediterranean and subtropical. Now I'll just get, I'll, I'll come to a bit later just to, to, to remind you about the difference between having um, you know, different pastures, native veg pastures is quite a good pasture to have, it doesn't house as many pests. When you have highly um, fertilised pastures they tend to have a lot more pests in them, um, they're, they're much higher quality, which is good for you. Stop for not saying pests. So, um, this is a, just a spatial visualisation example. Uh, Rutherglen Bugs, you've probably heard of them. Um, this next couple of slides is going to demonstrate um, that these type of insects and pests that basically exist in your, um, in your landscape. They don't just come in on a truck or arrive on a wing, like some you know, maybe clay locusts have a reputation for doing. So um, the Rutherglen Bug here starts off in January, March, early in the season. And you can see this is our this is our Bethunder site again. We've got our two um, two just sort of dirt road, major dirt roads running through the top and bottom of that picture. You can see there's no rather green bugs in any of the native beach sites uh, at that time. So basically they start out life in in your pastures uh, and, and particularly in the pastures that, that are uh, are not very good. The ones that are perhaps extra weedy that you see let, let go a bit, um, rather than the, the ones that are kept uh, under control by stocking and, uh, uh, and keeping the weeds out of them. So by uh, April and June, the uh, rather clean bugs start to move out in the across and start to cause a little bit of problem, sucking on, on the, sucking the juice out of all your, your crops. And also a, little, a few of the grasses in the uh, native beach sites, they start to come in. And then by winter, uh, cool off again, of course, and there's not many uh, uh, rather green bugs in, in, uh, in uh, the grass paddocks now. They're sort of mostly just a little bit of nice native beach. Uh, uh, so things are a bit quiet there. there. When they start to hay off again, um, they, they tend to, to, uh, to, to move on uh, to into, and stay in the crops and then perhaps moving back into the pastures again. So sort of highlighting that uh, you know things in the pests in the local area they tend to cycle around different between the native veg crops and pastures. So at any one time they might be um, in one of those but not in all. So the native veg and pest control summary. Uh, both crop and non-crop vegetation are important for pest control. A lot of insects move because um, they have wings. <laughs> so consider a whole landscape, uh, uh, or consider your whole landscape including adjacent fields. Native vegetation is important for conserving some beneficial insects in intensive cropping landscapes, but we need to look at what is happening in crops and pastures. Uh, weeds, and I guess this is the bottom line, literally it's on the bottom. Weeds harbour common pest species on farm and native veg host the beneficials. So um, that's, that's the sort of main thing to, to take, take away from that particular section. So I just put this one in last night um, in terms of um, some of the pests. So it's think before you spray. Soft, soft options may be available instead of just going out with the, the biggest killing you've got. So, you know, for example, aphicides, if you've got aphids, you know, don't spray. 
um, just all around insecticide use, use something a bit soft.